OK, so we're going to take these ideas between how to, uh, about how to formalize a game as we formalized this card game. And we're going to look at some different categories of games. And we're going to look at some of the outcomes. But then we're going to ask ourselves, are we always stuck over here where we don't want to be? Or are there things that we can do to move to this solution that's better? So for the card game, you saw that if you played it over time, you could build up reputation and trust, and you can get to a place where you're cooperating regularly. So that's what we're going to look at, is strategies like that. Okay. Okay, so what is a game? A game is a, uh, well, there, there are many types of games. We're interested here in the ones with strategic decisions, where there are interacting decisions among different players in the, uh, in the game. You can also define a game as zero sum or not. And, and a zero sum game means that somebody loses when somebody else wins. But you can also have games that are win-win, where you can both win. Okay, so we're going to focus on games where you have at least two players. There's some choice of action where your strategy matters. You have more than one outcome. And the outcome depends on everybody's strategies. Okay? So this, this leaves out uh, games like slot machines and lotteries because there's no strategic interaction really there. Um, and games like solitaire, the card game where you're playing by yourself and those kinds of things. Okay, so we're not interested in those. We're interested in other kinds of games, which will then translate to the supply chain. Okay, so here are the elements that help us define a game. So if I ask you to define a game, to think about a conceptual game, these are the kinds of things you would want to think about. How many players are there? What types of players are they? NGOs, donors, beneficiaries? Is there a role of chance in the game or uh, probability? What are the actions that each player can take? And sometimes you'll have games where, where one player has three actions available to them and another player has two actions available to them. They don't have to have the same set of actions. Actions also don't have to be discrete. Uh, a discrete action is uh, I, I provide aid or I don't provide aid. Uh, an, an action that would be continuous would be how much aid am I going to provide? A million dollars or two million dollars, you know, or anywhere along that spectrum. What are the payoff consequences? That's also important for, for defining a game. Now, in reality, we may not have good estimates of all of these things. And so I would say that even thinking about the structure of the game and the types of things that can result in it can be useful in thinking about how, what your decisions might look like and how to achieve better cooperation. And I would also say that thinking about decisions in this framework can change the way you think about your decisions. And so at the end of this module, I'm not expecting you to go write some matrix on a board or a piece of paper somewhere. But rather, it's my thought that it may change how you think about your decisions, both in the short term and in the long term. And for me, it has done that. So uh, uh, for me, I, I find that I use uh, uh, ideas that come from this framework every week with my colleagues, my coworkers, my family, anybody. Mm -hmm.